around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, you figure Amo will have your horse shod by now? I should have, Chester. He's a good blacksmith. I swear I don't see how nothing but prairie can wear out shoes so fast. It wears your boots out fast enough. Well, yeah, but they ain't iron. Though the shape my feet's in, they might well be. Something else, Dutchman. Yeah. Gil Tallman must be waiting for a horse. He's a loudmouth, aren't he, Chester? He got through with him. That horse was so lame he couldn't walk a foot. How to break your face. Please, if it was my fault, something I did wrong, don't pay me anything. What's the matter, Emil? Huh? Oh, Marshal, this fool Dutchman messed up my pony. Oh? Maybe it was a stone bruise. Ain't no stone bruise, Marshal. It's pinched feet. That's what it is. I ain't paying a cent to any blacksmith who cripples horses. Well, of all the mule-headed... It is all right, Chester. Best we forget it now. I purely don't like that, man. How about my horse, Emil? All finished. New shoes all around. Yeah, good, good. How much owe you? Two dollars. All right. Here you are. Thank you. Yeah, Chester, you get up behind. I'll ride you back to the office, huh? Come on. There. Uh, Marshal. Yeah, Mr. Tolman is wrong about me. The horse he ride just now is one I shoot two days ago. You can see he is not lame. And he didn't seem to be. And there sure wasn't nothing wrong with the way he traveled. Hey, well, this has been going on for a long time. Why is Tolman Hura on you? Do you know? Oh, maybe because I am German. Maybe something else. Who knows? Well, I'll ask him to pay his bill if you like. Oh, Marshal. <laughs> you won't get rich if you aren't paid, Emil. Well, money is good, yeah, but... Not worth enemies. Now, yeah, whatever you say. Ready, Chester? Yes, sir. All right, hold on. Uh, you want some coffee, Mr. Dillon? No, no thanks, Chester. Say, do you know what Lily Langtree's going to be in here in a couple of weeks? Oh, how do you know? Well, Mr. Hipple over at the Opera House told me. And in case I don't get to see her, he's going to let me have one of them big picture posters. He is, huh? Uh, the Jersey Lily. My, I sure would like to be tall hog at that tall. <laughs> Hello, Mac. Chester. Hello, uh, Doc. Hello, Doc. Hey, did you know Lily Langtree's going to be here? Did I know? <laughs> of course I did, Chester. Already paid Hipple for a chair. Oh, well, is this all you two got to do, just sit around and talk? Well, things are kind of quiet, Doc. You know, we can't always have a few shot-up cowboys just to keep you busy. Besides, we're waiting for the evening stage. I could just get the loan of a dollar, but I, mean, I could get to see the little... Uh, oh, the all right, money. Chester, here. Oh, no, here, here's a dollar. Like now, change. will you be quiet? Oh, Mr. Dillon, my <laughs> Marshal <laughs> Dillon. Oh, hey, Mo. Well, come on in. Oh, well, well hello, Emo. Say, hey, you're all dressed up, Emo. You got your Sunday clothes on. Yeah, yeah. I'm meeting stage. Five o'clock. Ah, is that so? Got new wife coming. Uh, you got what? new wife? He's right. Well, I didn't know you were married, Emo. Oh, no, not married yet. I, I will get married after she arrives. Well, who is it, Emo? Well, I am doing good now. And want to have wife and children. But girls here in Dodge don't want a meal for husband, so I answer advertisement in St. Louis paper. An advertisement? Uh, what for? 
advertisement says, young German woman wants husband. So I write to the paper and say, come to Taj City, be wife of Emil Volheta. And she's coming on this evening stage. Huh? That is right. Well, what do you... <laughs> Why, that's just fine. Yeah, it sure is, Emil. <laughs> You got a place for her to stay? Oh, yeah. I talked to Mr. Doby at the Dodge House. She'll stay there until I get place ready behind my smithy. Uh-huh. It's here. The stage is huh? pulled up the other side of the plaza. Oh, ah, well, well. Well, good luck, Emil. Uh, Marshal, you uh, and Doc and Chester come, too. What? Yeah, I want you to meet Gretchen. <laughs> we'll be proud. Eh? Oh, good, good. Oh, the funny thing for a blacksmith... I'm very weak. Elijah Cuddlestone was his name, and politics was his game. I'd like to quote him briefly, if I might. I I don't care what my colleagues say. It's my constituents that count. Constituents, that is. The folks who you know, put me in the office. Now, I'll filibuster for them. You filibuster, I say. I'll talk the issue into the ground. Into the dust, that is. I'll delay it till I fall from exhaustion. Till I collapse, I say. Well, that's how Elijah used the word filibuster. You know how it came to be a part of our political language? Well, here's the story. In the 17th century, the buccaneers who infested the West Indies and Spanish-American coast were called freebooters. Freebooter coming from the Dutch free, meaning free, and bout, meaning booty. Freebouter became filibustero to the Spanish, and to the English, filibuster. The word finally came to mean anyone waging an irregular warfare for his own gain. Now, a filibuster may be conducted by a congressman who speaks interminably to wage war or a delaying tactic against the legislation which he opposes. You know, Marshal, all of my life I am not afraid of anything, but now, for no reason, my, my stomach is sick. Yeah. Now, there's only one woman getting off the stage. That must be her. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say, she's a pretty little thing, ain't she? Yes, she sure is. Well, go on, Emil. She's standing there waiting. We'll wait here. Uh, well, uh... Well, go on. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, go on, man, go on. There's plenty of time to be nervous later. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Fräulein Schiller. Yeah? Grüß Gott. Ich bin Emil Wolheta. Ich bin fröhlich und glücklich, dass Sie gekommen sind. Wolheta? Um, ich hoffe, die Reise war nicht zu so schwer. Nein, ganz gar nicht. Ich bin erfreut, hier zu sein. Meine Freunde sind sehr liebe Leute. Ich werde sie Ihnen vorstellen. Ja? Mm-hmm. You wonder how they can understand each other talking that way? Oh, for heaven's sakes. Oh, you are no, just you do? I am. Oh, look, he's bringing her over. Sprechen Sie Englisch, äh, Fräulein Gretchen? Ja, natürlich. Ach, so, äh, Marshal Dillon... Gentlemen, Miss Gretchen Schiller. How do you do, gentlemen? <laughs> Welcome to Dodge, Miss Schiller. Thank you, Marshal. I hope you'll be very happy here. Yeah, you sure got a fine man. Thank you. I know much about him already. We have written. Now, Marshal, I will take Gretchen to the hotel. Come and see Gretchen again. Yes. She seems a little scared, doesn't she, man? Now, Doc, she took a big chance coming out here. Yeah. Well, come on, Matt. This is an excuse for some sort of a celebration. I'll buy a glass of rye. You too, Chester. Well, all right, Doc, since you're buying. You know, I I was just thinking, she's so little and Amos so big, I sure hope he don't take it into his mind to beat her now. No. You know, Chester, Amel's about the gentlest man I've ever known. Besides, Chester, that men don't always beat their wives. Well, I know that, but some does. Uh, Sam, set out some glasses and a bottle of rye whiskey, please. All right. Now, it's Gil Tolman again, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. One of them furnaces is all we need around here. Now there's two. That's too many, Doc. 
You and Chester wait here, huh? We ought to tow on feathers of both of them and send them on their way. All right, that gal he brought up here. How drunk are you? Ain't a man allowed to say what he thinks around Dodge no more, Marshal? Not when he's thinking the way you are. This is between Wallhater and me. There's nothing to do with the law. Why don't you drink up and get out and take Spooner and Willie here with you? Ah, uh, just a minute. You listen to me. All of you. Emil Wallhater's trying to mind his own business. And if there's any trouble, I'll know who started it and he'll go to jail. You saying you're going to lock me up? Tolman, if Emil Wolhater ever gets mad enough, he'll kill you with his bare hands. Now, you leave him and that girl alone. <laughs> girl? Why, she's probably nothing but a... All right, Tolman. You and Spooner carry Willie out of here. Okay, Marshal. We'll go. But just remember... I've got a score to settle with that blacksmith. By the end of the next week, Emil Wallhater had finished fixing up the little room out behind his smithy. And the week after that, he married Gretchen Schiller. And on their wedding night, they made quite a picture. Standing there by the fire out behind the smithy, the great giant of a man and his little bride, smiling and happy. Now somebody brought a barrel of beer, and there were boiled eggs and pickled pig's feet and roast chicken and smoked beef. And some of the women had brought sugar cakes and dried apple pie, and some of the men whiskey. It was good fun, until Tolman and his two friends arrived. Well, I didn't think he'd have the nerve to show up here, Mr. Dillon. Uh, neither did I, Chester. Where right is the dancer? Uh, kindly drunk. <laughs> yeah, so are Willie and Spooner. Hey, Willie, you go find yourself a gal. Yeah, hey, you two, Spooner. Me, I got one waiting. I'm gonna dance with this little old gal. <laughs> How about it, Mrs. Walt Hey, Mill. Come on, gal, dance. He don't care. Hey, Mill. We are all friends here, but I... Nobody's dancing right now, Tolman. Why don't you forget it? Well, if it ain't the marshal. You are welcome here, Mr. Tolman. There's food on the table and drink. I don't want nothing to drink. I want to dance. Hey, you start up that music. Come on, come on. You were going to dance. <laughs> Maybe you drink too much to dance, Mr. Tolman. Why don't you just go home, Tolman, and sleep it off? Huh? Me and Gretchen's going to dance right now. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> Sorry to do this, Mr. Tolman, but uh, now we put you in water. Put me down, you stupid Pull ass. you off. Put me down. All right. <laughs> there me. you go. <laughs> A little quiet in some yeah. animal. Well, it's better than hurting him, I think. Uh, you, you filthy Dutchman. Oh, I, I'll pay you back for that. <laughs> Come on, Willie. Spooner, let's get out of here. Everybody, have fun. No troubles on wedding night of Gretchen and Amy. Towns in America have a lot in common, and yet they're each one of a kind. Take, for example, Washington, D.C. A native once quipped that the city's greatest import is tourists, and its greatest export is waste paper. No figures are available on the waste paper, but tourism in Washington increases each year. Of course, there are the monuments and shrines of our national government, but people come for more. They drive out Massachusetts Avenue to gaze at Embassy Row or shop on fashionable Connecticut Avenue. In the summer, there are concerts at the Watergate and full-dress parades at the Marine Barracks. Out in Rock Creek Park, children return their Easter ducks to their natural habitat, releasing them in Pierce Mill Pond. In Georgetown, 
you can board the barges for an idyllic ride out the historic Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. Or, if you have to miss it all, the Beltway will whisk you around the district on Interstate 495. But if your hometown is Washington, you already know this. We only wanted to remind you, it's still there. There wasn't any more trouble that night or in the week that followed. I kept my eyes open, but there was no sign of Tolman or his friends, and Dodge was pretty peaceful. And then late one night, trouble did come, but not in the way I'd expected. I'd been out at the Crockett place, and when I rode back up to the office, Chester was waiting for me. Mr. Dillon? Hi, Chester. Hi, Mr. Dillon. I sure am glad you're back. What's the matter? Oh, there's been a fire. What? It was the blacksmith shop. What? Uh, a bunch of the men still over there. But well, where's Amos? I don't know. Nobody ain't seen him. What about Gretchen? Oh, Miss Kitty with her. Oh, she's awful upset, poor thing. By the time we got bucket lines going, the place just about burnt to the ground. Well, how'd it get started? I don't know, but a shack like that flares up pretty quick. They didn't have time getting nothing out of beds or tables and such like. Look, there it is. Yeah, there isn't much left but a pile of coal. Uh, there's Miss Kitty right over there. Oh, yeah. Hello, man. Gretchen, Kitty. Oh, Marshal, he's gone. All gone. Uh, it's going to be all right, Miss Wolfitter. Uh, Kitty, why don't you take her over to your place? Huh? Oh, yeah, it's a good idea. You come with me, honey. Oh, no. No, I can't. He will be back. He will worry. Well, the marshal can tell him where you are. Well, where is your husband, Gretchen? He was called away. Well, when? A few hours ago, a man came for him. What man? One of the men who came our wedding night with Mr. Tolman. Oh, she means the night of the chivalry, man. Yeah, it must have been either Willie or Spooner. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Leave, oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Oh, thank God. He was so pinched to keep me. I'm, I'm going to take her with me, Mr. Wolfe. Yeah, you are kind, Miss Kitty. Right now, she needs a woman. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. Come on, Gretchen. Let's go. Huh? Yeah, yeah, all right. Thank Marshal, you. I think somebody set that fire. Well, why? Somebody wanted me away from my place. So he told me I was needed down the trail toward Willow Bend. A horse had pulled up lame because of thrown shoe. Yeah? But there was no horse. Well, who was it, Emil? It was the man Spooner. Emil, if you'll say Tolman was behind us, I'll have him in jail by morning. No, Marshal, I don't know for sure. But anyway, this I settled myself. I won't have any killing, Emil. There will be no killing. But for the first time, I am very angry. Not so much for me, but for little Gretchen. What are you going to do? I will wait. Next time I see Tolman, I will teach him lesson. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what is it, Chester? There's Gil Tolman coming. Huh? He's got Willie and Spooner with him. Oh, come on, Chester. Let's step out onto the porch, huh? I think we might need a little fresh air. Yes, sir. Here. Look at the three of them walking right down the middle of the plaza. There's Emil across the street waiting for him. Yeah. Hey, Tolman! You and your boys come over here. Why, sure, Marshal. What do you want? Hold on. Crazy Dutchman. All right, Tolman, all of you, drop your guns. Now, just a minute, Marshal. Drop them, I said. Come on. Uh, That's better. Now, gentlemen, I think the blacksmith wants to talk with you. What? Mr. Tolman, I don't mind when you don't pay me for work. I don't mind when you are a little drunk. But when you do something to hurt my Gretchen, I mind very much. What are you talking about? I am going to fight you, Tolman. You lay a hand on me. Spooner and Willie here will tear you to pieces. I don't want to fight other men, but if they try to stop me, it's too bad. You're crazy. No, just very angry. Boys, get the Dutchman. Mr. Dillon, we... Stay out of it, Chester. No, no. All right, Emil. All right, Emil. 
fast enough. Stop it, Emil. Yeah. Yeah. Chester. Run right up and get Doc. Huh? Uh, all right, here, Matt. Yeah, I saw the whole thing. Oh, my, what a beautiful fight. Oh, that was a beautiful thing. All right, some of you. There. Will you help Doc carry these three men up to his place? Yes, help me carry them. Just take them like that. Uh, yes, with the seat. Uh, yes, sir. Careful now, careful. Uh, watch the heads against the stairs like that. That's right, boys. That's right. Get that man's face out of the dust there. Yeah. Oh, my gracious alive. I never seen nothing like it. Emil. You want Doc to have a look at you? No, no, no. No worse than chewing Missouri mule. No, no, Marshal. No, I go to Gretchen. It is time that we, we start building new home. With your permission, I'd like to quote an excerpt from a speech by that old political character, Elijah Cuddlestone. And I say, it will state and declare, that is, that pork barrel appropriations are not going to be our salvation. We must, I say, we have to get up on our hind legs. I mean, you stand up and fight for our own improvements. The pork barrel is for loafers. I mean, the greedy and the weak, that is. <laughs> that term, pork barrel... You know what it means? Well, pork is fat, and fat for hundreds of years has meant plenty, abundance. Ye shall eat the fat of the land. About a hundred years ago, in the halls of Congress, fat, meaning lucrative or rewarding, became pork. And about fifty years ago, when congressmen sought larger appropriations for such things as bridges, harbor or river improvements, public buildings, and so forth, to impress their constituents, they were accused of seeking pork barrel appropriations. 